Let's steal the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we have Nika Gule joining us this morning. Nick, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Happy New Year, Mercy. A happy New Year to our viewers. Yes, Happy New Year, Nika Gule. Thank you so much for uh, being with us all through 2022 and also continuing with us in 2023. It's my pleasure. Well, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper for all the press, or off the press, I beg your pardon. Uh, that's what we're starting off with this morning. Presidential poll, Obasanjo endorses OB as Atiku Tinubu Kam's protest. Uh, that's a former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Lushagun Obasanjo, endorses OB as Atiku Tinubu's camp protest. OB ahead of others in terms of knowledge, discipline, vitality, character. That's what the former president is saying. Ex-president says Nigeria became hell under, on earth under Buhari's administration and scores APC law. Abbas Andrew endorses endorsement, worthless, his uh, political paperweight. <laughs> APC and PDP is saying. I mean, it's just normal, you know, to put all of that out. NCDC, emergency team meets over China COVID-19 surge. Okay. Six million meters for deployment before June. That's what the federal government is saying. Scarcity, federal government plans inspection of fuel station tanks. Jonathan Adeboye, make 100 most reputable African lists. Jonathan Adeboye, that's uh, the pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church uh, and also um, a former president of Federal Republic of Nigeria. Good luck, Jonathan. Make 100 most reputable Africans list. Governor's wife welcomes first babies with gifts. That's for the new year. There's also a picture representation of all of that. Motorists kill five dancers during party. Ogun couple killed after crossover service. Son abducted. It's unfortunate. And uh, that's the much we can take this morning on the punch. We turn our attention to the nation now. On the front page of the Nation newspaper, former President Olusegun Obasanjo under fire for endorsing LP candidate Peter Obi. That's a Labour Party candidate or presidential candidate, if you like to put. APC PDP uh, orders Knox Epps president. So uh, there are several comments, but we don't have time to go through all of that comment. 18 die in New Year Day accident. What 2023 will bring by Adeboye Uyodipo. Among others, uh, you find Gandu J. Akeridolu Bello drum up support for Tunubu. And again, you find two feared killed in military checkpoint attack by gunmen. Nigeria in top global chart as investors earn 4.45 trillion naira gains. Stocks bullish in third consecutive year. And uh, AG, AUGF reports 17.877 million barrels of crude oil exported without records. Oh, wow. That's uh, very saddening. Accuses the AGF of paying 73 billion without approval. But we'll just move away from the nation. That's the much we can take on the nation newspaper. Uh, the next paper we have now is a Daily Trust. The Daily Trust says, Atiku Tinubu kicks as former president Olusha Gunobasanjo back. So be. Uh, this might just be topping all of the papers this morning. Very predictable. It's a worthless endorsement. APC campaign is quoted to say, only... The endorsement of Nigerians matter to us, the PDP saying that there's also that has a point as well. <laughs> that's the, that's very important. Why I backed Obi against Tiku Tunubu, ex president Olushagun Obasan Joe's quota to say, says Nigeria hell on earth on the Buhari. <laughs> Some people say hellish. 
Fuel subsidy favors the rich more than the poor. Sunubu is quoted to say. Social media users unsure as CBN cash withdrawal limit will curb vote buying. Uh, that's another word entirely, especially Twitter. And you find New Year, governor promise better delivery and preaches peace. Governors promise better deliveries and preaches peace. Uncertainty dogs PDP as presidential polls uh, gather steam. It died 22 injured in Ogun New Year road crash. NMPC operatives destroy uh, the barrage with stolen crude oil filling station in Delta. Well, that's the much we can take. We'll just move away from that. And we'll just turn our attention uh, to the Daily Sun newspaper right here. Like I mentioned earlier on, uh, the front page is quite predictable this morning. Presidency. Obasanjo endorses Pitao B. That's for 2023, of course, which we're in a few more days. Uh, the elections will just be here. Right Youth Others says Labour Party candidate will salvage Nigeria. That's the, uh, one of the riders you find underneath the caption. Ex-President Endorsement Worthless. Tunubu is quoted to say it is his personal opinion, Atiko is saying, and that's also very valid. I'm in strong position to win, Obi is so confident. And just before we move away from the Daily uh, Sun newspaper, another caption says, don't be guided by your stomach pockets in choosing the next president. Uh, the Bishop uh, Khan orders a warning Nigerian voters. President Wike, not Atiku, frustrated zoning to southeast. Okay, so they're saying that uh, it's Wike, not Atiku, that frustrated the zoning. Well, it's, 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 it's really uh, interesting. I may feel his lawyer writes AGF and seeks arrest of DSS DG. Anglican primates identifies unemployment insecurity as threat to peace and national unity. Adeboyo Olukoye seek prayer for Nigeria and warns of danger ahead. Rivers PDP ready for election, says Governor Yesom Wike. These are some of the headlines uh, uh, you find this morning on the Daily Sun. And just quickly, a Kwaibom government raises teachers' retirement age to 65. That's it. Let's have Nika Gule join us, uh, who's on standby. Once again, thank you. Nika Gule, thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Messi. Nice to be here. Yes, please. Let's, you know, quickly share your thoughts on the one that's dominating uh, all of the headlines this morning, uh, the presidential elections or the presidential poll or the presidency, whatever caption is being given. The endorsement by former president Olusegun Obasanjo seems to be getting a lot of reactions from you know, the political gladiators, especially the presidential candidates, among others. What are your thoughts? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, expectedly, uh, President Obasanjo is a dominant character in the Nigerian political space. So when he makes a statement, especially a weighty one, like uh, backing one of the front-running candidates in, the, in this year's, uh, it's no longer next year, in this year's uh, presidential polls, uh, it's going to make headline news, and it's not disappointing that we have seen those headlines. I personally have my issues with President Obasanjo. I actually think that we're unlucky to have him to run the first leg of our democratic journey uh, this time around, because um, I think uh, democracy survives on, on strong institutions, and President Obasanjo did not do much to build strong institutions, the judiciary, the legislature, and all of that. You know, uh, sometimes I thought he was engaging in an executive brigandage. So I have my issues with him on that. But on this endorsement that he has made, he has every right to do so. As a bona fide Nigerian, a senior citizen for that matter, it is within his democratic rights and freedom 
of choice and association to endorse one of the candidates as a presidential uh, as, as as his own candidate for the presidential post. So those who are taking issues with him on that, they are absolutely very wrong. The president has every right. And now I'm not also surprised that the president has chosen um, uh, the Labour candidate because politically we know that he's not going to back his vice president, his former vice president, because he has already written off the former vice president, even in books and all other press outings that he has made. And it's also difficult that he's going to endorse uh, Asiwaju uh, Bola Tinubu because if you recall, whilst he was in office as president, he had a running battle with Asiwaju to the extent that the local government funds for Lagos were withheld by Obasanjo all through that time. And it was only President Yaradua when he came into office in 2007 that released those funds. So you can clearly see that he has political issues with the other two candidates. The only option left for him, basically, will be the third force in the front running uh, candidate, Peter Obi. So it is not all surprising that he has made that choice. But we are going to see uh, what holds in the next few days in terms of whether this endorsement is going to have political value for Mr. Peter Obi or not. Okay, but um, I, I'd like us to, you know, look at some of the issues that have been raised. You know, uh, because there's a lot of back and forth with whether or not the G5 is supporting uh, <clears throat> the presidential aspiration of Bola Tinubu, who's uh, the flag bearer of the APC, right? And and some people think that, you know, it's game over. If you have this five governor supporting him, then the game is over. But uh, that's a, a conversation for another time. This endorsement by uh, a former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, has been described by the APC, uh, you know, campaign campaign, be it presidential can candidates, uh, what have you, as worthless. Do you think that there's any implication? Does he have any weight? Uh, according to them, it's just uh, a paper weight. It's just in paper. So it's a, it's a paper thing and uh, it's of no significance. But I'd like to share your thoughts. If you think this would mean uh, translating into votes, does he have any implication? Uh, okay, before I say that, I'm so sorry, uh, Mercy. I'm taking this interview at the Abuja International Airport. No, that's fine. So I'm sitting right by the road, and uh, frequently vehicles are passing. Uh, I guess they're interrupting with the interview, but we'll make the most out of it. So I, I don't agree that the endorsement of the former president, President Obasanjo, of the Labour candidate, Peter Obi, is worthless. I won't agree with that because... President Obasanjo is a political heavyweight in Nigeria. I mean, he 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 was a military head of state, and then he was uh, a president for eight good years. He has built political structures. I mean, in his first coming in 1999, he didn't have any political structures. But within the eight years that he held the reins of power, he has built political structures. He has followers, so he has ardent followers, and uh, there are a lot of Nigerians that uh, listen to him as well. So for him to come up publicly to endorse Mr. Peter Obi, there are a lot of people who are going to listen to that. And they will say, well, if President Obasanjo is backing Mr. Peter Obi, that means there must be something in this Mr. Peter Obi that we're going to look at. So there is some political value. But how much of it is what is debatable? Uh, I think that uh, there is political value, but it's not enough to change the game or tilt the game in favor of Mr. Peter Obi. Mr. Peter Obi and the Labour Party need to do a lot more work, especially at the grassroots, if they want to take the presidential post in, in uh, later this year. Okay. Well, uh, uh, if you also look at the response, uh, he says he's very confident of winning the election. Uh, but like you have rightly mentioned, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Fingers are crossed. It's important that everyone gets their PVC, especially when there are reports of uncollected PVC in different quarters, uh, I mean, across different states of the Federation. But um, progressing, let's look at fuel scarcity. The federal government has plans to inspect fuel station tanks <laughs> as a way to, you know, the issue to ensure whether there's scarcity or people are holding this product. What do you make of this move by the government? Uh, fuel scarcity is one of the most painful things in Nigeria. 
Very painful because, mercy, Nigeria is one of the world's biggest producers of crude oil. And you, you just imagine that you are thinking, you are talking about a farmer, a farmer who is one of the world's biggest producers of foodstuffs. The family are routinely hungry, looking for food, queuing up to get food. Even with their money, they cannot see food to buy. It doesn't make any sense at all. And the reason, the singular reason, mercy, that Nigeria has found itself in this situation is because we have four refineries that the government have allowed to rot. Four good refineries. Even if it is just one of those refineries that is allowed to work to full capacity, we will not be talking about fuel subsidy. We will not be talking about fuel scarcity. The federal government will not be spending time and energy going to inspect anything. There will be a flood of petrol and other uh, petroleum products in Nigeria, and we will even be exporting. We will even be exporting. We have an installed capacity of 445,000. 445,000 liters, I mean, uh, barrels of crude oil every day. Nigeria's internal consumption is not even up to half of that. So the reason why these refineries aren't being allowed to work is the puzzle. And I mean, we cannot advise uh, President Buhari ag I mean, again on this because he has only uh, five months or so in office left. The person we need to now be targeting and turning our attention to is the person who is going to take the reins of power come May this year. That person, whoever he is, this is the lowest hanging fruit in Nigeria. Petrol, diesel, kerosene, all of these petroleum products, let this person join you six months, six months to fix the refineries. And they can fix these refineries either by putting money in there by themselves or leasing the refineries out or selling them out outrightly. And within six months, the refineries will be sorted. And once they are sorted, we will no longer be talking about fuel scarcity. We will not be talking about fuel subsidy. Nobody will be suffering overnight, clean up in Nigeria to buy petrol. This is a job for the next government. Your very first job. Mm. Uh, it, it brings us, you know, to um, another conversation that's on the Punch newspaper that over 17.877 million barrels of crude oil were exported between 2016 and 2020 without proper documentation. That's on the nation, by the way. Without proper documentation, in other words, they were not recorded. There's no record as regards this transaction. Now, what do you make of this, especially for an administration that's big on transparency, right? As one of it, the fight against corruption. How do you export 17.87 million barrels of crude oil between the period of 2016, when you have this government in power, to 2020 without record? It is shameful. It is very shameful because Nigeria is a criminal enterprise. You know, if Nigeria was not so blessed by God to be this strong, the way Nigeria is being looted, Nigeria would have no longer be existing today. Nigeria is existing miraculously, I would say. Look, when we produce crude oil, a, a chunk of it is stolen, first and foremost, a chunk of it is stolen. And then the one that is sold, a chunk of it cannot be accounted for. These things have been there for a long time. Even the former central bank governor, Sanusi, uh, uh, his excellence Sanusi, he said this thing, that at 20, about, at about $20 billion worth of crude oil proceeds cannot be traced. And today nobody has done anything about that. You know, so this, this thing is that President Buhari, like you rightly said, campaigned on a tripod of objectives. One, corruption. Two, economy. Three, security. And none of this has he delivered. Absolutely nothing. So as a former petroleum minister himself, you will expect President Buhari to understand the dynamics of the industry. And President he, Buhari... He's also still yes. the current petroleum minister. That hasn't changed. A current petroleum minister as well. So if you if you take off from his experience as a former petroleum minister uh, in Nigeria when our the petroleum industry was burgeoning, and now that he's even uh, the petroleum minister, he is the person who should understand the ins and outs 
of that industry who should understand everything that, that is the person that should be very difficult to deceive when it comes to the petroleum industry but he has decided not to do anything and criminality in the industry high level criminality in all facets we just spoke about few subsidies that is petroleum industry and now we talk about few theft and now we, i mean crude oil theft and now we're talking about even the one that is being sold there are no records it doesn't make sense but president Buhari is spending eight years we can't talk about him again we have to turn up and that person must seize the moment that person must stand up for nigeria and nigerians that person must take back our oil industry and that person will have to deliver value to nigeria because we talk about government going to borrow that there is no money how can government be going to borrow that there is no money and the same government is allowing the major source of our revenue to be looted without anything being done about it that president in 2000 and in this in this uh, in may 2023 we have to take the very first step of arresting arresting the rot in the petroleum industry and giving value back to nigerians no but um you know this already a lot of people will say still in the uh, you know in the realm of accusation it's an allegation until it's been proven guilty by uh, a court of competence jurisdiction. But according to this report as well, still on the Nation newspaper, there's also an accusation that's been uh, made of the Attorney General of the Fed Federation of paying 73 billion naira without approval. Now, in all of this, if we say that this is anything to go by, there's always a statement that there's no smoke without fire. And if there's anything to go by, you're saying that we should you know, just forget about all of this that has happened, you know, in the oil sector, all of the corruption that's going on. We've heard of cases of oil theft. Now there are also issue of, um, you know, exporting the product without also record. It's another dimension of corruption entirely. So, uh, we, 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 you know, let's fold the arms and allow all of this pass. Where lies justice? Where lies, you know, the rule of um, restitution you know, what happens now? Should we just move away and focus on the next administration? Uh, 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 let me make myself clear. I am in no way saying that the rot that has happened in the petroleum industry should be swept under the carpet or forgotten or nothing to be done about it. The only thing I'm saying is that President Buhari for the past eight years, we have been advising him, we have been talking about this thing. Every time we, uh, we, we give him all that is needed. He hasn't done anything about it. And if the president in eight years hasn't done anything about the petroleum industry and the criminality that exists in there, there is no gain in saying that he's going to do anything in the remaining five months. I have no hope. And so our focus is on the next administration. And the next administration, the very first thing that the president will do when he takes office in May is to arrest the rot in the petroleum industry. Is to immediately constitute a team of auditors that are going to delve into that industry and un un unravel, you know, unmask and bring out those who have pinned Nigeria down in poverty over the years. Because let me tell you one thing, Messi. If President Buhari was geared to doing anything about this, a major report like this comes out. A major report about criminality in the industry comes out. You will expect an instant reaction from the president. The president should summon the petroleum minister this morning to his office, summon all those who are players in the industry. <laughs> the president the should summon himself. <laughs> That's what it should be. He himself, bring himself and every operator into the industry and ask questions and say, hey, why, are you, why what am I hearing? Is this thing true? I need to investigate this. He has done nothing. Even when we heard that over 1 million barrels of crude oil is being stolen every day, has produced the president has not done anything so mercy look we, we we cannot continue beating a beating a dead horse president buhari is not it as far as the oil industry is concerned and fighting corruption so this is why i'm saying our attention should be shifted to the next administration who we have to do a clinical surgery of the oil industry and all the monies that have been stolen must be returned back to nigeria 
Because the poverty we are experiencing, imagine all these monies we committed into infrastructure, into education, into healthcare, into everything that Nigeria needs for our quality of life to improve. We would have made much more progress than we are now. So that is what needs to be done. The next administration, we definitely have to carry out a full forensic audit of this industry and bring out the looters and they will return the money. Okay, then, um, just quickly as we close the conversation down, uh, still, uh, this is on the Daily Sun newspaper. Uh, the, their consents by, you know, the church, can among others, and the bishop uh, asking that electorate should be guided uh, not by their stomach or, you know, pockets in terms of choosing the next president. But do you think that we can do away with these factors in the 2023 elections? Well, it is going to be difficult to do away with stomach infrastructure, vote selling, and all of that in 2023 because the poverty in the land is so much that a lot of people will be tempted with 500 naira to sell their votes. But what the church is doing is right. The church, civil society, eminent Nigerians, everybody who loves this country should stand up and say these things that, look, it should be about the candidate. It shouldn't even be about a party. You can vote a president in a different party, a governor in a different party, and, and the assembly member in a different party. It, just look at the candidates themselves. Because you know what is happening here is that the elite in Nigeria for a long time have taken their eyes off the board of politics. Majority of them don't even have, a, a, a good number of them don't even have voters' cards. Some of them have voters' cards, but they don't vote. But there is a, a resurgence of hope that people are now beginning to take interest in the political uh, affairs of the country. And without politics, look, without getting the politics right, without getting leadership recruitment right, nothing is going to happen in this country. We can just see this country continue to slide like this for the next four years again. So what the church is doing is applauded, and they need to do more. And uh, uh, another advice I want to give to Nigerians uh, who... Who, who did not take part in the voter registration is that, yes, you took your eyes off the ball, you didn't register to vote, but you can still mobilize those who can vote to go out to vote. You know, in America, I'll give you the example of the American presidential election, the last one. Donald Trump pulled 74 million votes. That's a lot of votes. Those are people that, no matter what you do, they will vote Donald Trump. But the other people went and gathered 81 million votes, and they defeated Donald Trump. So even though we have vote buyers, we have vote sellers and all of that, good people should step in and overwhelm them. So that if in a polling unit, about uh, 100 people sold their votes, let there be 200 people who will not say their vote and vote the right candidate. They will still win this election and will take our country back. Well, Nick Agule, thank you so much for making our time to uh, be with us this morning and be on the show that uh, off the press, we look forward to having you sharing more of your thoughts on uh, some national issues. Thank you very much, Mercy. And I always have to add in that the, the INEC is not distributing mm. voters' cards. Those who register, please go and collect your voters' card. We must take Nigeria back. All right, as much as uh, that's also very valid, it's also important that, uh, you know, INEC itself makes it very seamless and not difficult for the people to get their cards so they are able to be part of the elections uh, sometime in February. That's the size of it this morning on Off the Press. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at, you know, uh, the president or this administration's report card. Some of the achievement has been listed by the president, which was contained in his New Year message. Please stay with us.